Hello. Good. Right now we're going to be working on this hard drive here that was mailed in by Chad, California. He accidentally shorted the board with a power surge by using the wrong power cable. Chad bought another board and put it on the hard drive, but he's still not able to read any files. He later realized that we need to change the BIOS chip, so we need to take the BIOS chip of the board that was on the hard drive and put it back on the board that he bought for that drive. Let's go ahead and do it. The bias strip on this board should be right over here. Right there. So this one is the good board that the customer bought for the hard drive. Just doing a quick physical inspection on this new board that the customer bought to make sure everything is good and everything looks very clean. And this is the board that the customer fried. And that's the chip that we need to take off. Oh, okay. I see what happened. So it looks like some caps blew off the board. This board can probably be fixed if we resolder a new cap here. But since we already have a new board, let's just swap the bias chip. I'm going to start by removing the bias chip of the new board. We can remove this bias chip by using our soldering iron. I do not want to apply hot air, so we do not affect the plastic that's on top here. We do not want to damage that board for the customer. So let's go ahead and use our soldering iron with low melt solder. Low melt solder will work like magic to remove that chip. Let's see how it's done. So we're going to apply a little bit of flux here. We are almost out of flux. I called Amtech yesterday and they said the next shipment for this new flux may take month to arrive. So we told them to send over the 559 flux that we used to use. That's a great flux also. So in case we are out of stock on this one, we will have the other one. Low melt solder is sold on our website and they come in sticks like this. 6.5 inches and this one will last you a very long time probably 20 to 30 devices depends on how much you use the nice thing about low melt solder is it stays liquefied for a few seconds so if we apply low melt solder onto the pins here and pins here solder will stay liquefied three four five seconds and we will be able to easily remove that chip without having to apply hot air See, we got the chip out. We applied low melt on both ends and the chip came right off. We did not have to apply any hot air. Okay. Low melt got hard again. All we have to do is apply just a little bit of heat. And it's out.
we're gonna prep the pads to accept the new chip. So just a tiny bit of flux. Very good. Now we're gonna remove the chip of the other board. If you notice, pin number one is on the bottom right. So we have to keep that in mind. Now, since I do not care about this board, we can apply hot air to it. It's very easy to take the chip off by using hot air. But like I said, I did not want to take any chances on this good board here, so we do not melt that plastic. Right now, since we have leaded solder, it's okay to use hot air because it doesn't take much heat to melt the solder. But again, we're gonna use some captain tape. And captain tape will actually hold that board in place also, so it doesn't move. And the job is done. Just apply a little bit of flux. And go over it one more time. Okay, so the job is done. Soldering is perfect. Right there. Let's put that drive back on the board. Let's put that board back on the drive. I do not know if we can test this drive here. Since it's a video game drive, I do not know if we can read it on a computer. I just plugged the hard drive in. Let's see if we are able to read any files from it. Panasonic 3DO, Xbox 360, Xbox, awesome. Double click on it and all the games, I guess, or all the files. Awesome, so the drive is working. Right click on it, click on properties. And it's being read as a tera, yes, very good. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.